Secretary Swiper. Well, good afternoon, and welcome to the White House. We are here today to proclaim May as Older Americans Month. A proclamation concerning Older Americans Month has been issued every year since 1963. And each time it becomes more meaningful because the number of older Americans is increasing every year. Since 1970, for example, the national mortality rate has dropped 2% each year. Scientific advances in the medical profession have increased both the length and quality of life for our older citizens. Today, a typical 65-year-old will live another 16 years. And in the next decade, the median age of our country is expected to increase by another three years. As our older population increases, we must remain alert to the needs and vulnerabilities of this very special segment of our population. The double-digit inflation of the last decade took a particularly heavy toll on older Americans. People who had worked so hard all their lives helplessly watched as the value of their savings shrank beyond all expectation. The progress that we've made in the battle against inflation during our 14 months here in office has already had considerable impact on these people. I might add that older Americans currently dependent on Social Security did not see this program touched by our efforts to cut spending increases in our battle against inflation. In fact, while they make up only 11% of our population, Amer elderly Americans will receive 28% of the federal budget in this present fiscal year. This year's proclamation reminds us that Older Americans possess a reservoir of experience and a depth of knowledge that is a great national resource. Today I'm taking this opportunity to announce my support for legislation that will make better use of this resource. I will back legislation which eliminates mandatory retirement requirements in government and private industry based solely on age. When it comes to, cry, to retirement, the criterion should be fitness for work, not year of birth. Our studies suggest that ending forced retirement based solely on age will have minimal consequences on the employment of other groups and will help to erase the unjust perception that persons over 70 are less productive than their fellow citizens. We know that many individuals have valuable contributions to make well beyond 70 years of age, and they should have the opportunity to do so if they desire. 1981 Harris Poll found that 73% of retirees wish they had never quit working. 75% of current employees and more than two-thirds of business executives oppose mandatory retirement on the basis of age. And of all, all of the U.S. adults, 90% oppose a mandatory retirement age. Now this strong support could have something to do with the fact that all of us will give enough time to uh, grow old. Some of us have uh, already reached a certain chronological age which others thought should keep them from their jobs, or so I've been told. Our proclamation suggests that we owe a special debt of gratitude to our older citizens. I have said before of my generation that that generation of Americans has fought hard paid a higher price for freedom, and done more to advance the dignity of man than any people who have ever lived on this earth. And now, reaching those older years, the contributions they make and do today's, to today's America should not be cast aside. And with that said, I shall now sign the proclamation. Now, that concludes 
making the world safe for people like us. Yes. Why do you feel I don't think I should take the time to do it. I goofed. I, I never usually walk by a microphone. But, uh, I was so anxious to get at that proclamation, and as Bill Plant asked, why did I speak so feelingly? Uh, oh, I just certain have a certain prejudice about that particular subject. Oh, yes. All right. Yes. We are here today to proclaim May as Older Americans Month, a proclamation that's concerning Older Americans Month that's been issued every year since 1963. And I'm taking advantage of this occasion to announce my support for legislation that will make better use of this resource senior citizens, older Americans. I will back legislation which eliminates mandatory retirement requirements in government and private industry based solely on age. When it comes to retirement, the criterion should be fitness for work, not year of birth. And uh, I would add that many individuals have valuable contributions to make uh, well beyond 70 years of age. They should do so if they so desire. And some of us have already reached a certain chronological, chronological age, which others thought should keep them from their jobs. Uh, I've been told that. And so our proclamation suggests that we owe a special debt of gratitude to these older Americans. Thank you very much. What? Well, the Falkland Islands, the argument's been going on for 149 years. I'm, we're dealing with something not quite that old. <laughs> <laughs> what? You would like to see the invasion stop. I wish it had not gone forward. I understand uh, they have landed there. Uh, and I did talk to the president of Argentina and trying to persuade him not to go forward with that. Mr. Uh, president, Mr. Peter would like to meet you here. Yes. What? Uh, just to be of help if we can in this dispute. Now, I've got to meet some people here. James Schultz Gerontological Society of America, the professionals in research in aging. Well, we're trying to come I'm up with some answers. Oh, I 
I was asking Elizabeth if I could have one of the pins.